and welcome to a new uh, video on uh, our con a conversation about uh, Scrum Master Challenges. And today uh, I'd like to start by telling you a bit of a story. Uh, last year I was a coach um, at one of our customers. And um, uh, for one of the teams I had to act as a Scrum Master for a while. And then I was very happy to learn who will take my place. And she is here with me. Her name is Diana, and we will have a quick conversation about what were the challenges and uh, what we try to accomplish with this team uh, together. And um, especially trying to find good advice for Scrum Master who are starting in this role. So, hello, Diana. Hello. Um, first of all, what I like to do is to tell us a bit about your background, uh, because you don't come from IT. No, no, I don't <laughs> come from IT. This is interesting. So. <laughs> no, so I come from HR, human resources. My background is um, has, uh, as a recruiter, technical recruiter for IT. Um, then I moved on to rewards and recognition as a consultant mm. for rewards and recognition, which was a very interesting job because I was able to understand um, the um, motivation behind uh, the activity. And um, after rewards and recognition, I went on to becoming a Scrum Master, uh, which I first started in HR mm. for our onboarding process which we delivered as a product, mm -hmm. and then I moved on to IT. Uh, but you also, uh, besides this HR, you also are studying psychology, right? I'm also studying psychology, yes. Uh, my first uh, faculty was, uh, my first un university was uh, economic Academy of Economic Studies, uh, which was not really something I engaged afterwards. Um, so um, after a while, I uh, managed to enter the psychology university uh, faculty um, because it was a, like a hobby, <laughs> like a very a, a topic that I was very interested in. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons I was very happy with this because. Um, um, I know that the main job of a Scrum Master seems to be around uh, uh, IT and technology and things like this, but it's actually a lot about people, so the yes. psychology background is very, very useful. You know? I use it every day, <laughs> <laughs> actually, and I'm very happy and I'm very happy with the choices I made due to this activity. Yeah. Okay, so how did you decide to become a Scrum Master? What was interesting about this? Well, I was always interesting in, interested in um, projects, let's say, in teamwork, um, and uh, even in uh, um, HR, I was always interested in doing something new with our uh, work, with our uh, recruitment processes, or with our uh, recognition programs. Um, so my uh, manager, my, my the HR director actually uh, suggested that I follow the Scrum Master course because uh, mm -hmm. the bank was going through the agile uh, transformation. So um, I did, and I found out that I liked it very much. And then she uh, trusted me with the team that mm -hmm. did the onboarding process, and her feedback was positive. So this gave me trust and also the team's feedback was positive and um, I found it uh, very challenging but also fit to my uh, personality. Okay. So when you switched to the IT side, uh, what were you excited about? Why did you go there? Yes, well, I wanted to do Scrum Master for an uh, IT project, for an, for, IT for, an I, yeah, for an IT team. And what were your, um, what were you afraid of? Of course, I was afraid of not understanding a word they were saying, <laughs> <laughs> which happened <laughs> in the first month. I don't think I, I've attended a lot of ceremonies, meetings, discussions. Probably didn't understand anything they were saying. 
but yeah, I got used to the language, I got used to the information, and now it's very, it's, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Okay, I mean, we have the, this uh, habit of doing, uh, of talking in very hermetic way, uh, just for programmers, yeah. just for IT. Um, and so that, that can be one of the challenges. However, again, it's much better to have um, the psychology uh, background and fundamentals because as we were discussing back then, uh, when you are in a meeting, the most important part is to make sure that people are uh, collaborating. collaborating in the meeting, that the energy is good. Yeah. That... This is what helped me in the first uh, yeah. few months. To follow the non-verbal <laughs> um, signs of the yeah. team. Yes, and considering and thinking of the team as a group, as a team, and uh, consolidating their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, um, because it's very much about group management, uh, group uh, engagement, uh, cohesion, uh, not about individuals. Uh, there are members of the team, and um, so this is what what was I I worked on the first month. Okay. So this covers what happened in the first few days, but I guess there were many many other things happening. What can you remember and and tell us? Uh, without revealing too much about the project and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I remember the meetings. I remember um, meeting the team, of course, and um, some of the members I knew um, from when I was in HR. Some of the members were new in the company, so we met there, and um, I was very... Emo uh, I, 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 I wanted to gain their trust. I wanted them to... Uh, take me on board and mm -hmm. to be part of the team and uh, so I, very, I was very excited about this. Um, I think these were the first days uh, mm -hmm. about meeting them, uh, presenting myself to them, establishing a first connection. Okay. So what helped you in these first days? Um, okay. Again, my background helped mm -hmm. me. Um, because I was used to talking to different kinds of people with different backgrounds uh, and uh, adjusted my discussion, my topics to their needs and to their um, interests. Um, and so, um, um, and also my, I don't know, I'm, I'm an energetic person, I'm like enthusiastic and <laughs> probably they, they like that and uh, um, yeah, it helped me. Okay. Do you remember your the biggest challenges you had in the first days when you took over as Scrum Master? Besides, uh, you know, understanding the language. Yeah. Well, I think uh, we were in a transition period because you were Scrum Master, and I had to take on some ceremonies mm -hmm. in the time that you acted as a Scrum Master. Yes. So yeah, um, that was very challenging to take on these the ceremonies. Um, because I wasn't with them every day, but I was learning and I had to, you know, step in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I don't know if I handled them okay, but <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I'm here also <laughs> after a year almost, so it's okay, yeah. I think. <laughs> well, so you you know the the best way to the best way to learn a skill is to actually do. Yes, that thing yeah. and get feedback and then try to improve. So that's Constant why coaching basically was helpful for me in the beginning. Yeah, so that's why that's what we try. We try to um, give people some of the fundamentals, like for every meeting, the structure and all these yeah. things. Um, I had like key key points I had to follow, which yeah. were helpful. Uh, just to follow them in the first time, and then uh, I, as I uh, progressed in the job, I understood them better, and I was able to incorporate them and adjust them to the needs of the team. Yeah. And then, uh, anyway, the advice is this is just the beginning, but then you you develop your own style. Yeah. And that's the most important part, actually. It's yeah. Not to, to copy or recite no. from someone else. Or... It's important to understand what the team wants and the team needs, actually, what the team needs, not what the team <laughs> wants. 
and uh, to uh, adapt uh, the scrum process to the needs of the team. Mm -hmm. So with this in mind, let's talk a bit about the ceremonies because I believe when, when people think about Scrum Masters uh, without knowing the role value very well, mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to mind is that you facilitate ceremonies. Uh, everything else, which is actually much more difficult, yeah. <laughs> helping the team grow and all that stuff, and we'll discuss about that as well. Um, it's not easy to understand that part, but the ceremonies are easier. So. In competition to what said a colleague of mine, a scrum master also, uh, he was talking to a meeting of, uh, you know, like directors. Mm -hmm. And um, after he talked, uh, one of them asked, so what exactly is your, what do you do as a scrum master? And he was, he paused and said, I'm doing 50,000 uh, steps a day. <laughs> <laughs> now <Yes>. I understand. <laughs> yeah. so, talking that was to only yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's you know, amazing removing how... impediments, talking to people, <laughs> trying to do some, yeah. It's amazing how much you can accomplish if you actually discuss with people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. So, so, so let's discuss here yeah, well, the daily scrum. Um, anything interesting to share here? What was some things that happen during the daily or mm. some challenges you had or... Yeah, hmm. okay. <laughs> so, uh, daily is a very important meeting, is a very important ceremony, um, which takes, a time, takes time for a new team to understand and to engage in it properly because at the first uh, probably they will think it's a status update and they will talk uh, about uh, uh, different uh, I don't know, issues, bugs, or they will go into deep details about uh, some subjects that are not uh, the main uh, focus of the daily stand-up. Um, so this takes time mm -hmm. for you, uh, Scrum Master to uh, help the team uh, um, understand the daily and uh, to um, you know use it accordingly. Uh, and yes, you can have different challenges. I even had a you know, like a fight in a daily. A fight? Yeah, I had conflict management in a daily, I'm sure, in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Yes. <laughs> um, so what did you do? Did you stop the meeting? Or? I stopped the meeting, yeah. Yeah, that's the usual. I stopped the meeting, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and discuss with the people separately. separately and, yeah. Yeah. Um, there was also um, there were also times when some people were remote. Yes, uh, during the day. I mean, frequently there are frequently. times, uh, probably every day, someone is uh, working from home, um, and um, yes, you have to adjust to this mm -hmm. also, which is a challenge if you don't have the technical support, but you can manage. So how did you do it in the end? Well, we use uh, hangout meetings and uh, we uh, use a dis uh, like a speaker mm -hmm. and we connect the speaker to the phone and the hangout meeting. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's a Bluetooth speaker if I remember correctly speaker, and then you yes, can connect. And and... Everyone can join the meeting by hangouts <laughs> and then uh, it will, they will be heard on the speaker. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, we'll discuss about the board later because one of the challenges with daily is uh, sometimes you don't look at the board uh, if you are remote. They're looking at me sometimes. <laughs> this is another challenge of the daily. They're looking at the scrum master and like <laughs> reporting to the scrum, which is not something. Uh, yeah, so I step a little bit behind them, and then uh, they I leave them to discuss among themselves. At first, they usually look at me, and then uh, afterwards, they engage in a conversation between themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good uh, tactic, by the way, for for new scrum masters. If you see that the team is discussing with you, is reporting to you, then just try to step back behind the other people, and then they will start discussing. It's a very good uh, tip. So planning. Yes, planning. How was the planning? What happened there what was interesting or yeah so well uh planning um, 
is uh, going very well when you have a refinement uh, before <laughs> it. <laughs> and when the user stories that you are taking in planning are all uh, estimated, refined, everyone understands them, uh, then the planning goes smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have that, uh, it can be a bit challenging. Um, the challenge with us was that we were a waterfall project before, so the stories were were actually tasks and mm. they were individual tasks and the shift to make the task into user stories and to address them to the entire team not to one person was the road i will say like a journey to yeah. do that and um, now we are in the we are just uh, started to do the planning by let's say by the book and uh, we did the first refinement which was um, um, we took on uh, user stories which we estimated and now the planning went smoothly. Okay, that's cool. So yeah, about this um, thing with um, starting with tasks, uh, this is sometimes controversial in the Scrum world, but um, it was my decision back then based on the, the level of the team and so many things we had to learn to just go with what they had and what they were used to yeah. and this was tasks and if you read the scrum guide that's perfectly fine because nowhere in the scrum guide does it say about the user story there's nothing about sure. it so it just says you take the work items or whatever exactly. you plan them you do mm -hmm. them yeah but the <laughs> shift so was to take them from individuals to the entire team that yeah. was the challenge actually which we uh, overcame but it takes a while it's a mindset thing and um, of course in planning you should not uh, give tasks but you should let the team decide which task or user mm -hmm. stories or subjects or whatever they are going to work on the next sprint if i remember correctly one of the challenges was to to decide on one two goals and just follow those <laughs> It's still, a it's still a challenge. Yeah. It's still a challenge because, um, I mean, after planning, you kind of know what you are going to do. So everybody kind of sets an individual goal, even if they are working as a team. And also, the project owner may basically wants them done. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge to structure your ideas and to focus to keep a focus on a high level subject. Yeah. Um, okay, we mentioned refinement, and it seems like refinement has helped you. Yes, very much. Yeah. Um, but in the beginning, it was a challenge to actually yeah. do refinement. It, it wasn't refinement, it was like a status or something like this, status meeting. No, not a refinement. But yes, now we are going, we are doing refinement. Okay. So how about the retrospective? This is one meeting that I, as a coach, I care about probably the most mm -hmm. out of all of them, because uh, I keep telling people this is the only time when you actually focus on how you work. Everything else is about the work itself. Yeah. This is about how you work and how to get better at what you are doing. Yes. Well, I'm very fortunate that I have a team um, that talks <laughs> and uh, expresses their feelings and uh, their opinions so uh, retrospectives for us uh, actually work um, in terms of uh, giving them space to address issues that uh, happened in the last sprint and that probably weren't uh, very good uh, you know like worked on um, so retrospective is not a place where you uh, blow of steam but you think about uh, what you can actually do better in the next time you will be in that situation yeah yeah uh, we had uh, one retrospective this week and it was a subject of testing um, and they were very focused on this uh, expressing their unhappy <laughs> ex <laughs> uh, experience because I you know they had to participate in this process and not all of them wanted to do this but um, afterwards they um, understood that okay this is a team we are all here as members of the team and we have to um, take on responsibilities even in uh, this area 
and uh, um, they concluded that uh, it was a very good experience for them actually and they learned how to do it better next time because mm -hmm. in a few weeks we'll be in the same situation and now we know what to not do then yeah so that's uh, it's very interesting what you said about um, uh, people sometimes blowing off steam at the retrospective this is something that um, uh, it's not written in manuals or <laughs> anywhere else but as a scrum master you need to decide if you let them how long do you let them uh, sure. depending to... on the energy depending on what happened in that so yeah. this is one very good example where actually having a scrum master that you know understands the team understands the, the frustrations that they went to during that sprint is very very important yeah. because you can you risk if you uh, if you don't let them blow steam you risk not getting anything of course it's an improvement yes if they blow steam too much then again, you're just like you know whining and complaining all day yeah. which is not the goal of the retrospective so this is one of the things that you need to decide when to stop and yeah. that's there's just there's no rule for that. No, there's no rule. It's a facilitation. <laughs> you have to sense and uh, you know adjust uh, in the yeah. retrospective. So you see, that's actually what a good scrum master needs to do, and it's much harder than just facilitating the meeting. Um, okay, so let's discuss a bit about the visual management part. Sure. So we have a visual board. We have maybe well the tasks and or the user stories on mm -hmm. the visual board yeah. we have maybe some graphs that we look at mm -hmm. afterwards uh, things like that so what was your story here or what's interesting about this this part of the well the board um the physical board works very well as you know we have the room um, um, with the, the the walls of the room are all written on and drew on this works for us we have the priorities on the uh, board uh, we have a separate board of priorities now we have the uh, impediments board we have the team agreements on the, the walls we have the daily on the physical board uh, this was uh, you started this but this was maintained by them mm. it helped them understand and keep focus on where they are and what's next to do okay and also the product owner uh, was very engaged with this uh, physical board she finds it very useful yeah so i remember when i first set up the physical board everybody was looking kind of like, why yeah. are we doing this we have mm -hmm. gyra or whatever and so on but after a few sprints, uh, when we asked them whether they want to continue having the physical board or not, they said, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, we no, want the no, physical board. <laughs> everything is on, written on. We had Jira, of course, and we maintain it. Also conference, but we also have the physical board, which is like a schematic thing of what we do. Yeah, well, it's very... The, usually what I tell people is, you know, the physical board is the place where you can actually get up go look there yeah. move things mm -hmm. interact with it ask other people you know take a post-it ask somebody yeah. um, whereas in a digital board usually you don't even look at it no until you go to daily and it's, the scrum master no, comes yeah. and say ah oh, you need to look at the yeah. board and of course you probably end up adjusting the board yourself as scrum master <laughs> in java but no the physical board is maintained by them yeah Okay, so another interesting part, impediments. Um, mm -hmm. This is one of the core tasks for a Scrum Master. Yes. And I think I stressed it again yes. and again, yes. that is very important. Um, and I know we had our share of impediments sometimes. Sure. Uh, you are solving some of them, I was solving others. It was a lot of, of yes. work there. Mm -hmm. um, what what happened here? So how is how is it going? You mentioned you have an impediment board. Uh, we have an impediment board next to our daily board. 
So when we discuss on daily and someone says, I have this impediment, we do the post-it and we put it there, we see it, and then we follow up on it. Um, but um, the impediment, uh, what we are trying to do, I, what, what I'm trying to do and what we were trying to do, and I think we are succeeding in this, is uh, we move, we first uh, take it to the team. I mean, the team uh, says they have an impediment and then we, uh, we first ask, okay, so how did you handle it so far? Mm -hmm. So uh, what I do is not take on myself uh, the first uh, time someone talks to me about an impediment, but uh, I want to understand if they did something on it or if they can do something on it uh, uh, furthermore. And if in, they are blocked and I can help them, okay, then I will take on the impediment. Yeah, so this is about cost, you know, self managed things and <laughs> self organized. Yeah, self -organized. Yes, uh, the common uh, thing that I see here is uh, people tend to blame exterior factors. Mm -hmm. So, whenever you have an impediment, it's always somebody else yeah. or something else to blame. Mm -hmm. And this is the place where, you know, the Scrum Master needs to kind of put a mirror in front and say, hey, yeah. what can you do about this? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is, this is what we are doing. Okay. And I think uh, the team members are starting to adjust to it. And uh, now when they come with an impediment, they some of them tell me, I did this and this and this and this. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm blocked here. <laughs> That's perfect. <Yeah. laughs> So because of that, you need to walk uh, 50... Yeah, <laughs> 50,000 steps, thousand steps yeah. in the organization. <laughs> uh, sometimes to, ch to basically chase an impediment. Chasing, to... yes. Chasing is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, so, so they actually, the team members, they report the impediment. There is no hiding or no 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 hiding no i mean why would they hide things like this it does not help them <laughs> no everything is said right there in the daily or after daily or in when the pediment appears yeah um and how do do you deal uh, with um this continuous stream so there's a new impediment maybe every few hours or something like that yes <laughs> maybe there is <laughs> how, do, how do you deal with this well um if the impediment comes to me and i understand that they did everything they could about it um and i have let's say maybe two or three impediments to resolve probably i will prioritize the impediment Mm -hmm. and then act on them uh, accordingly um, but I don't know I'll just take on them and see what I can do because uh, if they maybe if uh, an impediment is prioritized against another one but it depends on another person then I move on to the next one yeah yeah so the reason I'm asking this because it can be disheartening to keep having problems mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and um but I think yeah, this is the, the same way of doing it, basically. So you cannot solve everything no. and you cannot solve everything now. Mm. No. So it just has to kind of, you just have to kind of go with the flow and yes, fix and find them one of the, the time. Best way. And, yeah. sure. and just get basically get um uh, feel better if you advance on one of them a little bit or <laughs> That's, that's very important. Uh, okay, uh, there were a few other things that uh, you did. Um, one was the one-to-one the -one meetings. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a bit about them? Yes, one-to-one uh, -one meetings uh, were very important for me in the beginning uh, when we didn't have a relationship established, mm -hmm. me and the team, I mean, and uh, also the team was in the their starting point so uh, uh, it was an opportunity for them to get to know me better first and then for me to get to know them better in one-to-one uh, -one meeting of course and um, 
uh, what I told them then and uh, it still apply and I think the, that's why I don't do one-to-ones uh, with everyone uh, so anymore is that uh, they can uh, address issues anytime they want and to openly discuss them and transparently and in the uh, space where we work because it's a safe space and we can talk about everything anytime. Mm. Um, and so they did that. And uh, now I just uh, probably follow up with a one-to-one when I find the difficulty somewhere with a person. Maybe someone is going to a, you know, like a tough sprint or and then just do a little bit of uh, coaching with them if they have uh, an issue. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't do them regularly anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I used to, and I, I think it, they're very useful in the beginning when, when the team is settling. Yeah, this is one of the practices that, again, gets adapted to, uh, to the team. Uh, we usually advise people to start with them especially to, to establish a rapport, to create relationships, to understand the group dynamic. Yeah. It's another yes, group dynamic. <laughs> important thing. And I think this is where um, your also your psychology training helps you kind of identify potential conflicts or people who can work together, things like this. It, Sure. communication styles yes. um, you discover uh, you know like uh, affi- affiliation affiliation with a person you like better a person than you like uh, someone less and you discover these things when you talk to mm-hmm. one to one and you can adjust them and address them and help them uh, overcome yeah yeah well, that, again uh, this is kind of the invisible work of Scrum mastering, yes. uh, <laughs> maintaining this uh, this uh, invisible uh, web of relations between people, so that they become a team and keep keep being a team. It's... Okay, and um, I think another practice you did was about uh, learning in the team. What did you do there? What? Um, so starting from the point that uh, there's, you should always keep focus on learning, not uh, only on delivering. Um, my input for this was that uh, um, it was easy for me to understand their uh, soft skills learning, let's say. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I could come up with uh, ideas to improve their uh, soft skills. And we did uh, two workshops on this. We did one on uh, stress management and, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, complex, <laughs> working in complex situations and another one in um, assertive communication, which is very helpful for uh, IT people. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think it's, yeah, it should be very helpful. Yeah, from my observation, uh, assertive communication is extremely useful in, for Romanian culture. And I think for, for many other cultures who are not used to, uh, who are used more to in the classroom to follow the teacher and things like this. It starts in, from there, of, yes. Yeah. Exactly. The, the education you know, center on the student, it centers on the professor. And so you don't give a, you don't have the chance to express uh, your opinion actually in school because uh, if your opinion that is, doesn't match is the professor's opinion, then you get a bad grade. Yeah. Yeah. And this closely re- relates to feedback, uh, giving feedback to one another, receiving feedback. Giving and receiving feedback. Yes. yes. <laughs> Two things, <laughs> separate things, which are important. Yes. <laughs> very difficult mm-hmm. um, okay so given all this experience um, if you are to start again as a scrum master now you are a new scrum master mm-hmm. what advice would you give to yourself um, okay <laughs> so, uh, don't worry <laughs> you'll understand it <laughs> you'll get there <laughs> Uh, don't give up, <laughs> you know, things like this, <laughs> empowerment. <laughs> um, no, keep the energy high and uh, trust uh, trust what you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
think you have to trust what you know and I think your input is very important um, in the team and the product that you're delivering. Okay, so thank you for this conversation. I hope it's, uh, it will be very interesting for uh, our audience, especially for new Scrum Masters. Uh, before we go on, I'd like to give you a gift. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Mosaic Thank Works you. Teddy Bear. My uh, own. We, uh, so there's, uh, there's a practice in uh, solving problems, which is called uh, rubber duck pairing. Mm -hmm. Basically, when you have a problem, you have nobody to talk to, you talk to a rubber duck. Yes. But you like teddy bears. Now I can so. talk to my teddy bear. <laughs> yes. I usually talk to my screen, but now I can talk to my teddy bear, which is better. <laughs> okay. You. So that's it uh, for this um, video. Um, I hope you learned new and interesting things from how to be a new Scrum Master. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to post a comment or ask us directly on our website, uh, mosaicworks.com. And uh, we hope to see you again. And don't forget to think, design, and work smart. Coming uh, next. Tremendous um, uh, moral issues that are we're going to be confronting the last in the next twenty or thirty years. The first paper we read every every semester I taught it mm. uh, was Langston Winners. Um, do artifacts? have ethics, I think it was. Uh, technology is neutral, it just depends on what we do with it, right? Mm. And his point is, is like, is technology is not necessarily neutral. For example, nuclear power. Um, if you, assuming that you want to avoid a nuclear holocaust, let's just start with that assumption, <laughs> right? Certain political infrastructure has to exist to maintain yes. an arsenal and power plants, right? Once you build them, you, the, the, Political structures that built them are perpetuated off the building of those that infrastructure. Mm -hmm.